Hi, my name is Thomas Foster and this is the first episode of a multi-part tutorial on GarageBand from Apple. This video is perfect if you are an absolute beginner or if you are coming from another program and you want to get a quick start into GarageBand. If you open the program the first time, it probably should look like this. Uh, we have here the chance to uh, create new projects and there are some templates that you can use. But we start now with an empty project. We say choose. And now we got this window uh, where it says choose a track type. The first the green one is a MIDI track. It's called Software Instrument. So you can play something on your keyboard and you can load sounds where you can play something. Here you have some audio tracks where you can record with your microphone or with your guitar. And here that's another kind of MIDI software instrument because that's the acoustic drama that is pretty cool but we take a look now to the software instrument and say create uh, so let me give you a short overview over this window here here on the top on the left side we have some buttons to open and close some windows for example the library where you can load some sounds we have here the smart controls where you can shape the sound a little bit we have here the editor button where you can open the piano roll or the score uh, to uh, edit your notes. And we have here on the right side uh, the notepad where you can make some notes for you. And we have the loop browser where you can load loops to your song. Okay, here we have the most important thing. What is it? The play button. So if we press on play, we normally immediately should hear the metronome that you can start and stop here with this metronome button here. And with this button, we can stop again. It's not so comfortable with the mouse to click here on play and stop. You can do this much easier and faster with your space key on your keyboard. The first time you click it's play, the second time you click it's stop. And with this button, you come back to the beginning. Um, here you see the bars and beats. So um, it's one, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three. How fast we hear this metronome, you can put in here in beats per minute. Beats per minute means 120 beats within one minute. So that's what we hear right now. One. Uh, one, two, three, four. But maybe you want to make a chill out track, a hip hop track, or a ballad. So this would be more like 90 BPM. A little bit slower. A pop song is somewhere in between, maybe like 100, 120. Uh, if you want to make a club track, um, it's like 125. Techno is more like 128. Uh, you can go up to 140 or 45 if you want to produce dubstep. Uh, 160 if you want to make drum and bass. Yes, and you can go up to 299 if you want to produce speed metal. But now we want to make more something like a dance track. So we go, go to 125 beats per minute and it sounds like this. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a region on this track. To do this, we hold down the control key on our keyboard. We click here or you also can right click to get this menu here. And now we say create empty MIDI track. Wonderful. To load another sound at the moment, we have something like a electronic Fender Rhodes. Um, you also should hear this if you press some buttons on a keyboard. If you don't have a keyboard connected, don't worry. We find another way to create notes now. Uh, we open the library and here you can choose some sound categories. I go to electronic drum kit and here we load the modern club. Uh, yeah, if you have a keyboard connected, you should be able to play this on your keyboard. 
If not, don't worry, let's close the library again. We make a double click on this region here to open the piano roll. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And the sounds are starting at C1. So you should be able now to play them also with the mouse. Very good. Let's start here with the bass drum. We want to create a four to the floor beat. That means we want to hear the bass drum on every quarter. So let's look to the piano roll. We have here one bar. Let's make it a little bit bigger by zooming in here with the slider. So now we see exactly one bar. One, two, three, four. That's the quarters. And we see here they're a little bit smaller regions called the 16th. One quarter has four 16ths and our bar has 16 sixteenths. But we don't want to make it too complicated. So we click with the right mouse or with the uh, while holding down the control key to the C1 on the first beat here in this field here and say create note. Now we created a first bass drum here. With holding down the option key, we copy this to one, two, the second quarter, right? And to copy both, we make a little square over the two kicks, the two notes, and we copy then here to one, three. So now we have a bass drum on every quarter. This is a four to the floor beat. Wonderful. We don't need the metronome anymore, so let's click it to just hear the bass drum. So we want to hear this in a cycle. For this, there is a own function called the cycle. You do this with this button here. Uh, we click on cycle, and now we have these four bars in a loop. Look here, at the end, it's jumping to the beginning again. So we can click in the right corner of our cycle to make it smaller and we make it now exactly one bar because now we hear this one bar in a cycle. And this makes it much easier to work on it. Um, now let's copy the second bass drum on the D1 to create a snare on it. And we do this also on the 1-4. So that's exactly the position where you normally would clap on 2 and 4. Okay, our neighbors here from Germany prefer to clap on 1, 2, 3 and 4, but that's another story. So let's listen to the speed. That's very cool, right? Okay, but we also want to have a hi-hat. So let's take a look where we find the hi-hat. Yes, it's here on the F sharp. All right, so um, let's copy it. In between the two kicks means an eighth after the one. So an eighth means two sixteenths. So this would be here, the third sixteenth. So we copy to here on the F sharp. Perfect. And we copy it also here between the two kicks on the third sixteen and here and here. And now it should sound like this. Very cool. So that's basically a four to the floor beat, right? Very cool. So how can we make it a little bit more interesting? We add some little ghost notes, some very small notes that brings a little bit more interesting beats to it. So let's copy the last snare to the last 16. Okay, and let's listen to this. That's great, but it has too much volume. How can we reduce the volume by bringing down the velocity? The velocity in 80%, it goes directly to the volume of the sound. Sometimes it also goes to some filter or more interesting parameters. But in this case, it's basically the volume of our snare. And we select the snare and here we can change the velocity. 
For better understanding, let me give you an example what you can do. You don't have to do this, it's uh, just that you have a better idea of the velocity. I copy this snare here 116 to the left and reduce the velocity. I copy both two to the left and reduce again the velocity and a third time we reduce the velocity. And now we made something like a little step. All right. But that's not what we want. To go back, we use the undo function. Here, if you go to the menu edit, you can say uh, undo change volume. The faster way to do this is to use the command set key command. So we go back one time, two times, three times with command set, command set, command set. And here we are again. Okay, the last thing we wanted to do is to reduce the velocity of our snare. So I select the snare here and I bring down the velocity so it sounds like this. So maybe a little bit more. That's great. So I don't want to make just one bar, I want to make eight bars. So for this we use the loop function. If you go to the right corner of your region, you see two symbols. The lower one, you can make the region longer, but without copying any notes. Now it's empty, right? That's not what we want. So we go to the higher right symbol, click on it, and while we hold down the mouse, we go to the right until bar 9. So we have exactly 8 bars from 1 to 9. And now we also make our cycle a little bit longer to 8 bars. Length is now 8 bars. So from 8 to 9. Let's listen to this. Yeah, that's exactly what we want. And I want to make a variation at the end of it, at the eighth bar. So I make again a copy of this clip to make a separate copy, an own copy, where I can change something. Let's place the cursor here so we see it also here in the piano roll. And now we erase uh, the kick and the snare, but not the first kick. So we keep the first kick, the rest we select and use the backspace key to erase it. And now we place some snares in the last quarter. Maybe here, here, here and here. Let's listen to this. To make it more interesting, we maybe work a little bit with the velocity. So let's bring down the velocity of the second and the third, like this. And we listen again. Yeah, maybe a little bit more. Now, now it sounds cool. What else can we do to make the beat more interesting? We could add some percussion. For this we open the loop browser and we want to use a shaker, so let's type in shaker in the text field. Uh, the first thing we hear are some uh, single shakers, but we want a complete beat. So let's try this one here. Oh, that's pretty cool. There's a more, but I like the first one, the Brazil sun shaker. That's cool. So we move it, while we hold down the mouse, we move it to the second track. Immediately we create a new track and the shaker already is in time. That's a special feature of uh, Garish Band that all the loops goes with your tempo of your program. So let's listen to it. That's wonderful. Let's copy it with the loop function over the eight bars. Brilliant. And I want to shape the sound a little bit. For this, we select the second track and we click here on Smart Controls to open the Smart Controls. 
And here we have a little EQ. Maybe we put in some more high frequencies and reduce a little bit the low frequencies. And we can add some reverb. Let's try that. There's another reverb called Ambience. Oh, that's pretty nice. But uh, still the shaker is too loud. So to reduce the volume, you can use the slider here. A tip is always to go down to zero and then slowly bring in the shaker to see where's a good position for the shaker. So let's do this. If you have any questions, then just write this in the comment. Also, you should not forget to subscribe my channel so you are informed if there are more tutorials for GarageBand. In the next episode, we want to take a closer look at the audio tracks. So please do not miss it. But at the point I say, thank you for being there. Always stay creative. Cheers.